Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to thank you for convening this panel today, and I, I do mean that sincerely, because as a New Mexican, I am one of only a few members on this committee who actually represents a border state, in actuality. And it is a crisis. What we are seeing on the southern border is a crisis. But it is not a crisis as our friends across the aisle would have us believe. It is truly a humanitarian crisis. And it is a crisis that has been manufactured, reproduced over and over again, decade after decade, by inaction by this body by individuals who refuse to engage in bipartisan immigration reform, by individuals who refuse to understand that there are millions of lives being held in the balance, people who have traveled thousands of miles across continents, across the ocean, to come to this country to seek refuge, safety, and opportunity just like many of our forefathers and foremothers who came to this country, we are a nation of immigrants alongside our brothers and sisters of our indigenous communities. My own ancestors who came here for opportunity seeking refuge in this country. That is why people are coming here to our southern border. And the inaction of this body in passing bipartisan immigration reform, in supporting those who proudly serve our country and are working on our southern border, the inability for this body to act and actually fund programs so that we can have a just, humane, and equitable immigration system in this country is the moral failing and stain on this body. So we can talk about a crisis at the border, but let's talk about what it actually is. And that's a humanitarian crisis. I also want to say, as somebody on this committee who is not only representing a border state, I am someone who has actually lost loved ones to the fentanyl crisis. It is an absolute crisis to know the pain of what it feels like to lose someone to fentanyl is something that I think many people in this room do not understand, but American people all across the country understand. We should not be playing politics with people's lives. This is serious. People's lives are in the balance. There are deaths happening all across our country because of these issues. So let's talk about the humanitarian crisis. Let's talk about these issues in reality and not try to score political brownie points, and get cable TV moments. This is about our communities and about our families. Now, let's be clear. The system is terribly broken, and that is why we need bipartisan reform. It's why we need action in this body. And the cost of inaction is falling on our communities. In fact, Thousands of people who have come to this country to seek refuge end up in my home state. And because we are not properly funding these programs, it is the people of New Mexico who time and time again have had to stand up and help people by helping to house them, feed them. Our government is failing. The system is failing. We need action. And it is the humane inhumane policies of the previous administration that have contributed to this crisis. In fact, under the Trump administration, thousands of children were separated from their parents. And to this day, because it was so haphazardly implemented, over a thousand children are still separated from their parents to this day. I know uh, Chief Chavez, you work in the Rio Grande district. I want to ask you, in the course of your work and your agent's work, and thank you for your service, have you met some of the families and children who have come across the border? Thank you, Congresswoman, for the question, and thank you for acknowledging the vulnerable population of children. For every Border Patrol agent that works that border, I assure you that our heart goes out to those children that show up unaccompanied on and, their own. And Agent Chavez, 
you have actually met these children and families. These are vulnerable populations. They are families, oftentimes children, who have traveled hundreds and thousands of miles by themselves. In addition to that, the Trump administration massively expanded the use of private for-profit prisons, which are lining the pockets of private corporations right now, charging communities like mine millions of dollars a month to detain immigrants in prisons. These are folks who have already been screened to be safe. And I want to ask our the, the ladies' today, time has expired. Have you actually been to these Let, private detention centers? A yes answer is. A, 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 feel free to answer the question. I, I've been uh, the children that we hold at our facilities, uh, temporary holding facilities. The for-profit private prisons where asylum seekers are being held. I am not aware. I have not uh, attended those locations. Gentle ladies, time's expired.